Hi everyone, welcome back to Our Hollywood. I'm Daniel. I'm Kim. And this week's episode is from the mind of Edgar Wright. Yeah. But before we get into that, do you want to do your little spiel? I thought we were going to do like a mental health check, <laughs> like usual. We don't have time. We don't have time. Okay. Um, I feel fine. Yeah, me too. Okay. <laughs> that was not convincing at all. <laughs> it was, but it's true. Like, I'm actually fine. Okay. Guys. Look okay. me in the eyes. I'm fine. Um, <laughs> speaking of, um, if you want to watch our podcast with video form, you can check that out on Our Hollywood on YouTube. Um, you can leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts. Five stars. <laughs> um, you can answer the weekly question on Spotify um, and follow at Our Hollywood on Instagram with a period in between the two words. At our Hollywood on TikTok and at our Hollywood on Letterboxd. All of those need to be updated, but I'll get on it. Yeah. Well, this is our season finale, so you're gonna yeah. have three weeks to do that. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> two yeah. weeks. We're good. we literally it's don't even think about it. Here's the, the first cycle. Week after. Here's how it goes. We start the season. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Halfway through. Oh, this is getting harder. Yeah. Towards the end, I never want to do an episode of anything ever again. One week after we stop the season, okay, I'm losing my mind when are we starting. Yeah. Every single time. And that's just how it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I just have to remember my to myself that we we miss it when it's gone. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Anna Kendrick. That's perfect. Uh, yeah. I know Anyways. I got it. I just didn't want to engage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> All right, so we're going to do a quick little what we watched this week because we have a lot to cover today. Um, and we've never done an episode like this, so I don't really know how long it's going to take us. Okay, I'm going to do a little shameless corner. It's going to be really okay. quick. Speed okay. round. Um, I really enjoyed the Wait, last season. Are you going to... You could just spoil the finale. I don't think I'm going to Oh, I wasn't going to spoil it. I was oh. just going to give like a general... Okay. Because I feel like a lot of people were in the same boat I was where they stopped watching it like around season, I want to say like seven or eight. And then in the pandemic, I caught up and then I saw that the new season, the last season came out and I was like, well, like, I need to know how it ends. Mm -hmm. You know, like I caught up during the pandemic. I might as well just finish it. And I didn't really have high hopes because this is first season without um, Fiona. There's only bit. I thought there was two. Oh, really? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. This one. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, yeah, maybe this was the second season, but this was so much better. I think because... The season before this, if it was Fiona was gone, they tried to make Debbie the new Fiona and mm. nobody liked that. <laughs> <laughs> With peace and love to the actress that plays Debbie. You play it right. Right. Because you're making us feel all these emotions. Um, and season 11 was really good until the... Like, I remember last week I said it was really good, but I have like three episodes left. And the last three episodes, I was like, What? Because they just uh-huh. started throwing in some random things. And I was like, wait, but there's like two episodes left. Why are we, uh-huh. what are we doing? <laughs> like Every season b- series finale specifically ever. Specifically with Debbie's character, they brought yeah. in like another love interest. Oh, but it's like weird. the most random love interest ever. And it's like, why? I don't think what? I liked any of Debbie's love interest ever. The, well, I, yeah, didn't, I didn't get that far, but mm, yeah, the last one I saw was it the guy that got her pregnant. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than yeah. that. Um, Debbie. I mean, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I think... The actress has kind of beef with the writers a little bit. Mm-hmm. She 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 says it very like nicely to not burn the bridge, but like I can tell like so she does not agree well, with some things. And yeah. honestly, if I was the actress playing Debbie, I'd be like, can we have one redeeming moment, please? Yeah, because I don't like that everybody hates Debbie. As soon as she dropped the baby, I was like, <laughs> it's like when Fiona when when that. the baby got into like the drugs. Yeah, like when that happened with Fiona, that was when I was like. Mm, that's enough for me yeah and like i, like, I feel like done. every you're yeah done. i feel like every shameless character has that one thing where it's like okay that was a bit much yeah and uh-huh. it's like almost unforgivable and for me debbie it was like when yeah. she had the baby and she was being irresponsible with it and with fiona it was same thing almost yeah that was the only thing they could come up with yeah i don't i thought it was really weird that they tried to make fiona and debbie like really much parallels and i get what they were trying to do in last season was like try to like establish because they're trying to make sure like it ends right so like everyone's like kind of moving away and stuff i hate when they do that and i liked it honestly because really? okay. it, it made sense like it did make sense honestly and they like brought up gentrification and stuff and i honestly like <laughs> a lot of the topics that they like chose to pick on which kind of is why at first i was like i wish there was more another season of this because i liked what they brought up but then, then the last three episodes i was like Wait, what? Why are we introducing things? Mm. Like, we're supposed to be I wrapping it up. That, yeah. You know? But I still liked it a lot. I thought it was a pretty good send-off. 
Did you read? I read what how it ends. Yeah, and I do like that. Okay. Yeah. I'm satisfied with no, that. No, yeah, because you were saying. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> okay, great. If you anyway. guys know, you know. Yeah, if you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. Um. Okay. Um. The French Dispatch. Go ahead. I loved it. Yeah. I was smiling the entire time. Yeah, it was, I was having it's fun. so much. That's fun. how I feel anytime I watch a Wes Anderson yeah. movie, though. You feel like you're watching like a little cartoon that's like live action. I guess I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but like I was literally having so much fun. Also, like for some reason they were barely showing it. Like we, they're, dude, they're, and also the Spencer movie. Yeah, is literally only. It's so weird. And last night in Soho, also there was one time. Yeah, I was like, what is going on? I don't yeah, know. That's why, like, the now Eternals. I'm like, oh, I guess I gotta fucking see it. Like at mm-hmm. the weekend. That's why I was like, I don't know if like. I was like, what time should we are we recording today? And I was like, I still want to see the Spencer movie. But then I saw that it's playing during the week. And I was yeah. like, I'll just go during the week. Also, did you, it, got, it has 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. But 50% audience. But like, so. I also don't really care about Rotten Tomatoes. I take Tomatoes it into, thing. I just like knowing what's on it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really affect, okay. in my opinion. Because, yeah, like, yeah, some same. of my favorite movies have, like, 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, same. So, like, I don't care. Yeah. Um, but, but I just it's think it's interesting it's to see. It's funny to see. Yeah. Yeah. Especially older movies that they, because Rotten Tomatoes but wasn't really a thing back then. I think people don't, like. Did people like it? Okay. The thing is, is, like, you know how people probably thought that it was about her whole life? It's only about like. Oh, I thought one we were talking weekend. about the French Dispatch. Oh, oh yeah. It's, like, um, it's just right like before. A holiday, it's the holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was like, I think that's a more interesting take because we've seen so many documentaries. Yeah. And we see the crown and stuff. Like, yeah. we already covered that. Like, I want to see, like, more of the emotional side. Well, so, I saw, I, I was. Still, I don't know. Like, I feel Wait, so, you saw it already? No, no, no. Oh. But, like, about biopics like that, like, I just feel so weird about it sometimes because I'm, like, in a way. It feels really fresh. You're, you're like, yeah, it feels too fresh. And also, like, I feel like in a way you're, in a way, rewriting history. Oh yeah! Oh my god! So that's like a whole different topic. I, yeah. I desperately want to talk about that in an episode. Someone will pick it up somewhere, or if not, we'll just like, do it for a solo episode. No, we yeah, let's do it for a solo episode okay, okay, okay. season because like I feel so many things. About yeah, me that. too. The Greatest like, Showman. You guys know what I think. No, yeah, we know. <laughs> but there's so many movies that rewrite yeah. history, and it's like it it can be done tastefully, but also like you have to like you can't expect too much from audiences. Also, but maybe now you can. Anyways, that's a different topic. Wait, <laughs> no, what I was gonna say was that like. Um, Back to French Dispatch. Wait, no, really quickly. Last okay. thing about Spencer is that like I read, like I was reading the reviews of it, um, and I saw it. Basically, what they were saying was like it's supposed to represent like um, it's supposed to give the audience hope that she was happy in her last days. That's like what uh, it's supposed okay. to be about. Well, but I was like, but is it true? Well, yeah, like I don't know. Like, I don't know if that's fair of you to do, Decide. especially with how sh- terribly she was treated after yeah. she left. So, I mean, we have to watch it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I don't know. <laughs> well, we'll kick it off season five. Yeah. Okay. The French Dispatch. Okay. I had so much fun. And I don't know if be- it's because I was a newspaper in high school. So, like, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. When, like. I knew you were going to bring that up, I too. was having so I much fun. I was taking bets with myself. Like, how yeah. is he going to connect to this? A hundred percent. Because when I was, wa- just the way they, like, sh- oh, my God. I loved it so much. And, like, I think I've only seen, like, the Grand Budapest Hotel and the the Tannenbaum, I don't know, whatever that one's called. Royal Those are the only other two Wes Anderson movies I've seen. Um, and I love them too, but I think this one's my favorite. Yeah. I don't know, controversial opinion. I feel mm-hmm. like people did not like this one as opposed but to the people other ones. people hate everything when it comes out. And then That's true. as like the years go by, the people that actually like it come to the surface and mm-hmm. it kind of gets like a re, especially when it gets put on streaming services, yeah. if it ever does. Like people, are, people yeah. just like to hate as soon as things come out. Yeah, but you I'm know? also glad I got to see this in the theater. Also, the theater was full. Yeah, I thought I was gonna be alone and with my lease, but no, the theater was full. And yeah. um, what was I gonna say? I loved the ratio, like the how they used. Oh my god, there was just so many things that I was like, oh my god. Okay, the the, the how he changed the ratio for certain mm-hmm. things, how he changed the color, how it went from black and white to color with when certain like oh, things yeah, would happen. I, love that. I was like, oh my god. I love like, when movies do that. Wait, okay, what was your favorite chunk? Was my it the, chunk? the like the, the painter? Art. Same. Mm-hmm. I was having so much fun. I was like surprised to see boobs for some reason. <laughs> but like the, so that threw me off in the beginning so i was like oh whoa i yeah when, when, when they checked my id to get in i was like oh so we're gonna see something oh they checked your id <laughs> yeah. so yeah i didn't know what the rating was i had no oh. clue so like did they not check yours no oh well to be fair marlise looks very little <laughs> they're probably like oh this dad and his daughter are coming to yeah. see this movie <laughs> and so that's why, that's probably why they checked it oh okay yeah, yeah. they didn't check my id but maybe yeah. it's because it's la so like la people oh, just true. don't care no they're just like go, come on come see 
Um, but it yeah, I, I don't know what it is about San Diego theaters, but yeah, they're really strict about checking IDs. That's I weird. remember it was like such a process in high school to go see like a rated yeah, R movie. Oh my god! Like oh my god! It why? Oh my I don't god! Know. Get over it. Maybe Anyways, in high school, I guess is what I'm saying. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> well, I, the movie. okay. The okay. So it was a, it was the painter chunk. Um, Timothy the Timothy Chalamet <laughs> chunk. I don't know. We're just gonna call it that. That one and was then the so chunk. weird. I had fun watching it, but yeah. I don't think I really liked it. Exactly. Because like yeah. I liked what it was saying about how like every generation thinks they're gonna be the ones that mm-hmm. make the impact and then they just don't. I love yes, I love the message. Yeah. Of what happened in between? I was like, not a fan of him. I don't love when people <laughs> do complicated relationships like that. There we go. So I don't really. Love I that. just because like not spoil. Were it. they in high school or college? I couldn't figure college, that out. College, but it's still oh. not right. I still was really even irked though it was so mundane, it. like the conversation between them, like it took me such a minute to understand what was going on. Wait, what part are you talking about? When they were in the bed together. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then when he was like, "You're so beautiful," I was like, "Hold on." I was like, "What's?" I oh no, like, I fully under when they cut from the bed creaking to them in bed. I was like, "Okay." I didn't. Maybe I like blacked out for a second. Maybe because the bed was it. definitely creaking. Yeah, there was I like thirty seconds of that. I was just trying to like not. I I guess I was. You were closing just, your I eyes. Wasn't, I wasn't in the headspace <laughs> to like register that. I guess. Okay. I don't know. What was the other one? Oh, the, the food chef. one. Um, that one was fun. I liked it. But Visually at that point, I was just fun. like, can this end already? <laughs> <laughs> I have no patience for movies that anymore. I don't know. No, I think I Dune ruined either. my life. I don't think so. Marvel movies did, yeah. did it for me. I saw that Eternals was like two hours and a half, and I was like... <laughs> Honestly, it, it was paced pretty well, though. I okay. Say. Um, But I get why you didn't watch it yet. Oh, but yeah. You know how you mentioned... I don't know if I cut this out of the last episode because our, our last pre-show was like 40 minutes. It was so I long. I was trying to tell you and you're like, yeah. no, it's usually, I'm like, no, I don't think so. No, yeah, it was really long. Um, But I can mention that like um, something about the ending. You were like, you're going to like the ending and I loved the ending. Right. I was having so I much I loved fun. it. I literally like shed a tear, I think. I was like, oh, love that. I don't, maybe I did. I don't remember. Not I, like I have a no tears left to tear, cry. But like a happy tear. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. that wrapped up. Yeah, I, lo- I, I just yeah. be crying, guys. Me. Yeah. Anyways. Tears of Ricochet. Yeah, so I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great time. Right? The I, was good. I really liked it. Also, I was like, we were getting towards the end, and I was like, where is... Oh, my God. I'm not going to say her name right. Shorsha? Shorsha? Ronan. I was like, where is she? I and then she popped she up. I she was in yeah. like, the things. I saw... It's because I saw a thing that it was like... I was like... <gasps> When, when she came on because i forgot me i saw this thing that was like when her and timothy chalamet are in a movie you know it's gonna be good and so that's how you choose in this they're one they're not even in the same yeah story. they're not they don't interact at all Who's they probably never saw each other on set out of the whole thing or uh, me top two okay um i almost said billy porter oh <laughs> what's his name ghostbusters oh my god oh my god this is so embarrassing oh my god the old, oh my god hold on hold on cast um, Bill Murray. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite character. When he said no crying, I no, I was having so much fun with that one. And then I think second would be the girl from the second chunk. I don't know her. I don't know the name of the actress. The girly with the bangs, the French girly. The little girl, yeah. She's not little. Whatever. <laughs> there was that one. Oh yeah, L- Lena Kud- Kudry. I should just not be allowed to read the names. I loved her. That was yeah. my favorite for sure. Yeah. Please. But maybe because I was like forced projecting myself on her for some reason because I had to project myself onto somebody. Angelica Houston was in this movie. I don't know. I don't. There's so many people in this fucking movie. I have no idea. I don't don't remember seeing her. Maybe like a cameo because I don't. I also like Simone. No, I didn't. Never mind. (laughs) Oh my god! Halfway through the movie, Tilda was so funny. Wait, halfway through the movie, Marley turns to me and she goes, "That's the lady from Narnia, right?" And I was like. (laughs) Yeah, it is. <laughs> it was so funny because it was like it was, was a, that chunk was about to end. She's the snow witch, the snow queen, or whatever. Well, I was a child. When I, I hated watched Narnia, them, so I didn't like the guy who's in Split. Didn't know he <laughs> yeah. was the horse the guy. Yeah, horse guy. You know the like Narnia is like Christian, like yeah. Anyways, we're getting so off track. Well, that's all I watched this week. Well, actually, I watched a lot, but I just yeah. I we're gonna that. talk about Last Night in Soho right now. Um, when we get into the episode, and I I have a lot to say. Did you? Well, okay. When we get there, I watched it. <laughs> oh, I saw Antlers. I have nothing to say about it. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. I remember seeing like the little sign on the wall that was like it has like the scene if you have like epilepsy oh, yeah, or something, yeah, yeah. 
Was it really Wait, that for bad? for Soho or which one? No, for Antlers. No, it was like, um, like I think it was like gunshots. No, no, it was like, you know, they were in somewhere dark and, you know, the gunshot was like turning on the, oh, the flash flashed, of the gun. Yeah. yeah, it was whatever. I don't think the only one that I was like, oh, my God, this could definitely hurt someone was Incredibles 2. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only one where I was like, okay, uh, they're, yeah, they're definitely Even need some like, warning. Like, yeah, I was like, I hello. Exactly it was like a 30 minute scene. Yeah, it was so long. Time. I was like, okay, damn. Yeah, I'm I don't tired know. of watching this. It was a plot device too yeah anyways okay so okay so today um we have a very new kind of episode if it goes well we'll do more of these um but i really have no idea how it's gonna go because i don't want it to be just us reading um no well i don't, just don't know if we're gonna get off track I was, what? we will i didn't understand it doesn't matter anyways i <laughs> break and then we'll be right back whatever happened anyway Oh, to him being a cannibal? Yeah, what? I don't know. He just disappeared and no one... Good. No, but like... Oh, like, should he go to... Oh, yeah, he should be in jail. Yeah. Wait, did he kill someone? No. Something happened. No, it's just like... It was like allegations that he was a cannibal and then like he like fell off the face of the earth. Because it's true. Yeah, even Timothy's like... I want a biopic. I, I want need, a... They absolutely are going to make a Netflix documentary about it. There's no... No, but like, I want like a Silence of the Lamb style... The like, documentary has to come first and oh, then Oh, of course, that. yeah. Because then they're going to base it on thing. that. Yes, exactly. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just thinking, just thinking about Army Hammer being a cannibal. Yeah. Intrusive thoughts. Anyways. um, Hi. Welcome back from our ad break. <laughs> and now we're going to be talking about Edgar Wright. So why we chose Edgar Wright as our first victim? Because, well, here's why I... <laughs> this is how the conversation went. I was like... <laughs> For this week's episode, we should do like a director spotlight. She's like, sure. I was like, we should do Edgar Wright. She said, sure. And that was it. And it's because I had just come out of seeing Last Night in Soho. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I forgot that I had wanted to do. Oh, no. I went to go look at the uh, like the Google Doc. And I remember that like the f when we first started like talking about the podcast, I wanted to do a series like going into each director, but we just never got to it. Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is better as a solo episode. Yeah. Because we already I have a lot of opinions. Was. Like, I was just like, I don't really know if I want to do that with, with like, a guest. guest. You know, it would have made. Like for what? Yeah, like unless anyway. you're like the number one fucking fan of yeah. this person. But so yeah, I, I thought you were gonna mention how I love Edgar Wright. But oh yeah, yeah. no yeah, we're, I was gonna do okay. story time. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Okay. Um. So whatever. I had just seen last night, so so I was like, okay, let's do Edgar Wright because I we're, Kim is like the biggest stan because <laughs> and the reason I know this is because well, first of all, like sophomore college, college, that was like my personality. No, right? it was. Yeah. The, the main one, <laughs> and there was a lot. It was like that and Brockhampton. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Oh my god! That's why I was a nuisance to society. Yeah, I just, I associate both those things to you still. I don't know if that's a good thing I or bad you're thing. You're not the only person that does either. Yeah. Every time I see Brockhampton, I'm like Kim. I'm in tears right now. Okay. Anyways. Anyways. So, um, I had I watched Baby Driver on my laptop, like in my dorm. I remember, and I was like, "This is so good," and I had never seen anything Edgar Wright. And then, like a couple weeks later, you were like, "Do you want to go to?" Because okay, the um Chinese theater does this thing called. No, the, the Egyptian Chinese. theater. Yeah, there's the Chinese theater, the Greek theater, and the Egyptian theater, all in LA. <laughs> um, and I so never realized that. I realized it when I was thinking about how I was going to tell the story. Okay. So I'm glad the joke was out there. <laughs> Anyways, um, so they do this thing called Beyond Fest, and it's like oh, I'm so sad that we are not in LA this year because they did a Last Night in Soho screening, mm -hmm. um, with Edgar Wright. They also did Halloween Kill screening with um, the director and Jamie Lee Curtis. Like they it's always a do super underrated film festival in LA. I feel like yeah, if you live in LA and you are a film stan, reasonably priced as well. Sometimes like they're free. Bucks. The last night in Soho one was free. Huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what? yeah. And so, but yeah, they they like charge depending on each one. It's a fun little theater. Um, they do like a Q and A. Um, and I went like every like uh, the first one I went to was the Baby Driver one. So they did a uh, Baby Driver like on film it was like what 35 mil i don't know i don't understand that <laughs> and it was a double feature with the driver which inspired that movie um and in between the two movies they did a q a with edgar wright um and the it was director so fun the driver too oh right right mm -hmm. king i know king and well, i was like are we staying for the second one because like i hate double features because i don't have the energy to watch two movies in a I row bad because but then so it was so horrible. good yeah yeah no literally kim was like we have to say because the director was like nice <laughs> he thought no one cared so then like know, the guilt trip doesn't sustain you know, that's what it was yeah. and i was like i care a little bit like another it was day. good though i enjoyed it, it. i think about good. it all the time <laughs> especially that garage scene yeah. every time i'm in a parking garage i think of that i think i try and then after that i was like oh i missed out on so many movies because like 
I'm just never going to know about them. Yeah. And that made me a little sad too. That is sad. Why would you say that? <laughs> I thought it was important really to the depressing. conversation. Yeah. Um, anyways, so that, that's our experience with Edgar Wright. That's our um, third degree from Edgar Wright. That's your experience with Edgar Oh, right. Wright. That's all. I, oh, and then later I was like watching his, his other movies. I've seen most of the ones that's on so the list. Interesting. Yeah. Do you want to know how Yes, I, yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay. I just wanted to Because sure. I'm scared. <laughs> really? No, I just remember my friend in middle school. Oh, wait, school, I do know. My best friend from middle yeah. school. <laughs> Um, she was very indie, like, right. she loved Vampire Weekend, but, like, not because of Tumblr, because, like, her parents introduced her to Vampire, like, that kind of stuff. Like, her parents... I didn't know they still made music, side note. I so didn't know that until right very now. Very different. Anyways. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah. I feel like a lot of, like, indie artists are like They're in their now. folklore era, but not, not in terms of oh. music, just, like, new sound. Okay. Interesting. Thank <laughs> you for letting me know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she was, like, indie, and, like, she... Um, was also really into movies. Also, I didn't realize, but she's a film major now. So, hmm. makes sense. That tracks. Yeah. yeah, that tracks. And she was telling me, we would always watch like all the new movie trailers together. And then Scott Pilgrim came out, like mm-hmm. the trailer for it. And we were like, <gasps> what the fuck? Yeah, I'm gonna need to watch this opening night. Yeah. We were like obsessed with it. And I, wa- I read all of the novels <laughs> in preparation for it. And then went on opening night with her and it was like such a fun experience. And that was before like I even knew directors were like a, kind of a thing. Like obviously, yeah. you know, like Steven Spielberg and James Cameron and stuff like that. But you know like, the big ones. Yeah, exactly. When people ask you like, what's your favorite director? You're like, Steven Spielberg. Or no, I used to say Alfred Hitchcock and I had seen literally Psycho. Literally <laughs> because of, no, me, Back to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, sorry. <laughs> that the sound like the ADHD like whoop, like what's that noise anyways uh <laughs> then I watched that and like my mind my little like 10 11 year old brain or something like preteen brain was like oh, mm. I've never seen anything like this I'm yeah. like this is cinema this is it <laughs> it was like my first like yeah like whoa that's your origin story no this is like the movie that like yeah that like, you start crying about scott pilgrim no no oh i was just like i don't know what word to use to oh. describe it <laughs> i but see I tears was, in your eyes and i was oh, like what's really? going on here? no i think i'm just tired um <laughs> but i yeah it was just like blew my mind mm-hmm. and i was like wow this is great and then as i got older i was like okay maybe i should look into directors of movies that i liked <laughs> actually no i couldn't remember what scott pilgrim was called for the longest time and then oh like you didn't know what it was you no just i was like, it, it was like i was like I, re- I was like what is this movie that literally blew my mind i don't know what would like, you even google it was for like that before like i had internet skills or anything uh-huh. like like i was just like my mind was literally just one direction that's all i <laughs> could function on but then i think around like after that time as i was getting more internet savvy mm-hmm. i like <laughs> saw like something online about it and i was like that's the movie this is it and then i started i rewatched it uh-huh. and i was like it's still as good and then that's where the personality trait of edgar wright stan came, came to from. be and um whatever ha- yeah so scott pilgrim and then i was like oh i love this freaking movie i'd watch it like literally every month <laughs> in college like not even joking it was like my comfort movie um i still stand by that honestly like people can say what they want but a comfort movie is a comfort movie you know what i mean <laughs> And then when I was in college, Baby Driver came out. And Mm -hmm. then, like, literally as soon as I heard it, I was like, guys. Wait, 2017 was your junior year? Junior. Okay. Oh, yeah, because I was already in L.A. So it couldn't have been your... Junior or, like... Sophomore, maybe? Second semester, sophomore year. Okay. No, second semester, sophomore year. Because it was right before I went to London, I remember. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And... I remember like watching the trailer and I was telling everybody, I was like, I'm so excited. This is when I worked at the movie theater. It was like peak movie theater Kim. Yeah. I was like, guys, I'm so excited for this movie. Theater movie. Kim. And I, oh my God, I remember when I went to go see Baby Driver, I took the guy I had a crush on at the movie theater and that ended like a shit show. So I'm glad I liked it so much that he didn't ruin it for me. And uh, yeah. Oh my God. That's the I worst. Because I hate when that happens, yeah. you know? You just have to keep watching it until you form a new memory mm-hmm. that replaces it. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Guys, I'm okay? fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my Edgar Wright tidbit. That's so... I <laughs> I love him. We'll get to Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. I, I, I realized... Get okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, yeah, we are. Okay, let's wait. So I'm going to speed through his a little background just because I felt like I was like, well, we have to know his origin story. 
But also, like, okay, I got this from Wikipedia. Not fact checked. If you wanted a fact check podcast, well, this is not the one. Wait, before we get into it, like, I feel like caring about directors, at least for like people our age, is a very new thing. Like, okay, or maybe it's just. I think we age. just have more access to yeah. directors, and now. also we're a special case because we're film majors. But like, when what age did you start caring about like directors and like started watching movies because somebody was directing it? Remember? Um. Yes, middle school. The f- oh, I <laughs> my okay, flex on my s- bio teacher talked about Psycho for like half an hour. Why was he talking about <laughs> it? Don't even remember. And um, also, he would mention like the w- he was like a film buff, but like it had nothing to do with the class. I don't know. And so like um, he talked about Psycho, and I was like, I need to see this movie. <laughs> and so I watched it, and I was obsessed with it. And then I was like, Well, I want to know more about this director. And when so then I went to your personality trait, it's like a different feeling. It is. I miss it's that. so fun. It, has, it hasn't happened. And especially when you know that it's going to, yeah. like you get into it. I'm like, this is it. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was really hoping. Last I don't think it's a healthy it thing. Been, oh no. It's like a different form of parasocial relationship. Yeah. Of course. Um, but I would rather have that with like a kind of inanimate object than like a person. Right. Because I feel like <laughs> there's still like a, a fair level of like, you can't oh my God. really that's, develop yeah, that, more feelings. That's another episode I want to do. That's a whole we're conversation. We're going to finally be able to do all the ones that like nobody. It's because a lot of people don't want to do certain things that we're. Just, it's just yeah, us that are just, interested in yeah. it. But Which then we like post like, it and everyone's like, "Oh my God, I'm so excited!" I'm like, "What? Mm-hmm. I thought no one cared." Yeah. Anyways, um, that's interesting. Well, I just wanted to know that. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. Edgar Wright, take it away. Okay. Edgar Howard Wright was born on 18th of <laughs> April, 1974 in Poole, Dorset and grew up predominantly in Wells in Somerset. He attended the Blue School, Wells, what? The Blue School, oh, I guess it's in Wells. <laughs> Guys, I didn't pre- read this. Um, from 1985 to 1992 and is honored by a plaque at the school. His high school drama teacher, Peter Wilde, played a cameo role in Hot Fuzz. Um, throughout the late, te- the late 1980s and early 1990s, he directed many short films, first on a Super 8 camera that was a gift from a family member, and later on a Video 8 camcorder that he won in a competition on the television program Going Live. Um, from 1992 to 1994, Wright attended the Bournemouth and Poole College of Art and Design, um, it's, it goes by a different n- name now, and received an ND in audiovisual design. Um, when I heard, like, it's so clear what age was like, the defining um, moments for him as a filmmaker. You can clearly tell. Yeah. When I read that, I was like, oh. Have yeah. you seen like all the little clips of him when he was like a young person? He looks like John Wick. No, my God. What's his, that guy's name? Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Kind of. Like a British version. Yeah. I could get behind that. Oh, Keanu Reeves was in British? I could. What is he? No, I think he's American. Oh. He gets British vibes. He does get British vibes. That's very He's fair. just polite. That's like, the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, sorry. Go ahead. Have you seen the things when he's young? Oh, and I don't know. It's just like you can tell he was like meant Aloo. to be a director. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like in like the most like boy white cis man way. Yeah, you can tell he's gonna be yeah. the way he just talks oh, and cares. Also, himself. well, I'll get to this later. I had I had like a realization in my head. About all his, but, but we'll get to me that. Me too, but I forgot, so I hope it comes back to me. I want to write it at the end. Actually, whatever, I'm going to remember it. Um, and then also, for some reason, this is on Wikipedia. And I was like, where did this come from? It's from a podcast. I didn't listen to the whole podcast, but this was, a, I guess, important enough to be on his Wikipedia. <laughs> at the age of 12, Wright went on a date to the movie Mannequin with Sarah Newton. I don't know who that is. Where Wright failed to kiss her due to the presence of a group of boys. This led to the demise of their short romance and the heartbreak Wright experience would be instrumental in his career. I was like, wh- okay. That's such a... Why is that on... That's such a boy thing. Yeah. Like a straight boy thing. Like... They're still hung up on their ex from middle school. That is really a thing, though. That yeah. is not the first time I've heard about that. About the Edgar Wright or just in general? No, just in general straight boys. I think it's because it, it, it reminds them of, like, failure. Oh, that's that's not unpack that. Uh, yeah, no, I don't want to. Um, anyways, hmm. um, his signature style. I saw this on um, IMDb. And I thought this was really interesting. There's like a whole website de- dedicated to that. Yeah, IMDb has so many fun things. There was like trivia for each movie, so I put some in. No, it's called tvtropes.org. Tro- oh, yeah, like I didn't even know that was himself. a thing. That's where I thought you got it from because a lot oh, of no. them are on there. Well, there were some that I read and I was like, I don't agree with this. But there are some that I do. So I wrote down the ones that I think I do agree with. Um, fast action style editing. 
Um, and this is this part, especially in Baby Driver, usually of mundane tasks, including whip pans and crash zooms. I love this. Um, I think this is the coolest thing ever. He did a lot in Baby Driver, but I didn't really see him like last night in Soho. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, repeated lines or snippets of dialogue for comedic effect. This is definitely like his earlier movies. Um, pivotal scenes that take place in a bar or pub. <laughs> didn't even realize, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Um, and then frequent and effective use of foreshadowing. He is one of the best foreshadowers My ever. favorite of his is not even on here. Like, Same. not on any of the lips. Because my favorite oh. thing about him and why I, like, deeply admire him mm-hmm. is, like, the way he transitions from scenes. Oh, like, They're oh, so yeah. smooth. Like, yeah. it'll be, like, one line of dialogue. Yeah. And then it'll carry over, like, a transition. Yeah. And then it'll, like, make sense for, like, the next one to be. Or like, it'll, like, Scott Pilgrim. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. when <laughs> he's, like, zoned out, he's like, where are we going? And then they keep on repeating yeah. it. And he's like, where are we going? He's like... Scott, you've asked like three times. Yeah. You're going in, it's like, and then they don't even show it. It's just yeah. like visual. I don't know. Last it's night, just so no, no, smart. no. Yeah, last night in Soho did it too, where she was like, where she was talking to the lady, and she was like, "I would never just leave in the middle of the night." Cut to her leaving in the middle of the night. Mm-hmm. So like, it does stuff that like, like that. They didn't do it as much though in last no, night. No, but it's still there. Like yeah. you can still tell it's it an Edgar Wright movie. Yeah, and also like, um, he'll do it's he. Uh, they're very rarely jump cuts, and if they are jump cut, it's like intentional. So like, mm-hmm. the light will turn off. And then the light will turn back on and they're somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Oh my God, I didn't even, yeah. That's my favorite tea. thing about That is really him. fun. Or like, yeah. Oh my God, fun. I literally didn't even think of that. Yeah. But yeah, that is one of his like signature Because I'm always like waiting for it to happen. Except in Last Night in Soho, I didn't wait it for It did that. happen a lot. But it was, really? I felt, it felt more, it, it didn't like, feel like it was it part was of it. It was such a different pace. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so now we're going to get into his career. So basically the way I have this structured is his early works just because I didn't want to talk too much about them because I don't think we've really seen them that much, but they're, like, important and instrumental to, like, how he became a filmmaker. He's really much a person that, like, sticks to what he knows. Yeah. Until yeah, yeah. we get to Last Night in Soho, which I feel like Sure, is, like, yeah. Well, well, I think recently he's been, like, spicing it up. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, okay, but anyways, so his early works. Um, he made his feature, feature film debut in 1995 with a low-budget independent spoof western called A Fistful of Fingers, which was picked up for a limited theatrical release. Um, and it was also on broadcast TV, I believe. Um, and then in 1998, a writer slash actor, Simon Pegg and Jessica Hines, were in the, in the early stages of developing their sip, sitcom called Spaced for Channel 4 and thought of asking Wright to direct, having fondly remembered working with him on the 1996 Paramount con- comedy Asylum. And Spaced is kind of like a community where it's like, a lot of the episodes are like spoofs of something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like that's the best thing I could compare it to. Um, yeah, because in space there was like one where like um, Simon Pegg's character was like so much on drugs. Like he got transported into the video game <laughs> with the zombies, which led to Shaun of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so basically space kind of like was like his little, his kickstart. I don't even know what to call it. This led to everything else. Yeah, essentially. because it was just like Simon Pegg remembered him and then yeah. they like really got along on Spaced and then led to like all the yeah. next three of his big movies. And also since Space did so well, um, it paved the way for Ray and Pegg to move to the big screen with Shaun of the Dead, which was released in 2004. Um, it was directed by Edgar Wright, written by Wright and Simon Pegg. Um, and it was starring Simon Pegg, Kate Ashfield, Lucy Davis, Nick Frost, and like a bunch of other people. Um, thoughts on this movie? Um, I don't really like zombie movies, but I do like this one. <laughs> oh, also, okay. In like in also Zombieland, but um, okay. you know, when I was like thinking about this, I was thinking about Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, and what was the last one? World's End, and I was like, wow, they're really the British version of Judd Apatow movies, <laughs> you know, or like um, yeah, Seth Rogen movies. That's like the same oh feeling God. I get from them, yeah. you know. It's like stoner comedy. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like funny. Maybe that's why I didn't like them. I don't really like any of these early movies. Really? They're just not for me. Yeah, I get it. I think it was because I really liked the Judd Apatow and like Seth Rogen (laughs) movies. Yeah. That kind of just made sense for me to like this. But I feel like sometimes like because I'm American, the British humor sometimes just goes over my head and I feel like a little like not smart. (laughs) Like excluded. Yeah. Like, like, hey, I I want to know. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Because that's what I like about his movies It's like kind of like your insult on the joke like he doesn't make yeah it's not like he makes super highbrow shit like you can pretty much follow along what the hell is going on i don't on. think he, yeah i don't think he wants to make highbrow shit no i think he likes i think i watched an interview with him that he said that he was like no one like i don't want to make movies where you're like above your audience like, yeah why yeah what's the fun in that team um me shrugged <laughs> the first time i saw this movie it was because i was like i want to know more about 
Edgar Wright. Mm-hmm. And so I was looking into his movies and I saw that um, he directed like a zombie movie and I heard so many good things about it and it was October. So I was like, let me check it out. I genuinely did not like it. Really? I think Why? here's the thing and we're going to get into this. His main characters, so obnoxious. I Especially think, yeah. in these early movies. I, je- I loved the main character from Last Night in Soho, but I don't like Scott Pilgrim. I don't like Baby. I don't like Sean. Like, they just, I don't like them as main characters. I like them as movie characters, though. They were, oh, they were great as but movie like, characters. But, like, if I met them in real life, I probably would not speak be friends to them. with them. But, like, <laughs> watching them from afar, and I think that's why I like it, is like, I like watching movies with, like, people that, like, I necessarily wouldn't identify uh-huh. with, which is so funny because. You know, we have to do that anyway. Yeah, I mean. But, and I've been doing that my entire life because mm-hmm. I don't think there's one movie character where I'm like, oh, that's exactly me. Anyways. Um, Period. But I do think, I don't know. I, I just like seeing. I also just, d- I, this is not my kind of comedy. Yeah. I love like um, Do you horror like Judd comedies. Apatow movies? No. Well, yeah. well, it's not that I don't like them. They're just not my thing. Yeah. I can, like, I know it's Shaun okay of the Dead is a good movie. I know it's so hard to say you don't like things on this podcast because no. I feel the same way. Because it's just such a claim. Yeah, exactly. I and don't, because it's like, but when we say we don't like something, it's not like a, I fucking hate this shit. We use it. Season one, yeah, us. Yeah. Oh my God. I don't know why I'm so angry all the time. Anyway, <laughs> but when I say I don't like things, it's not like, it I, is, it's I, not like I feel super against it. I'm just like, it didn't. It it's not land. for me. It's That's literally okay. not for me. Because I know, okay, Shaun of the Dead, I know it's a good movie. Mm-hmm. I would rewatch it, sure. But it's just not, not a, I don't know. And it's like good, like where I'm like, oh, that was good. Yeah. Like, I think they also do like the, the quick cuts or whatever. Yeah, and, and they like, do the stuff to music. Yeah, the opening scene, or like, no, it's the scene where he like wakes up and it, the zombies are here. Mm-hmm. I love that scene. Yeah. It's and visually it. appealing. And that's honestly like, if it's visually appealing. <laughs> that's enough. I will, I stand. It's like a zombie. Yeah, it's fun. Even I like if, it. Even like, if the dialogue isn't, like, necessarily, like, the best, like, I mean, I think the dialogue is good, though. Like, I think... It is good. I like... It's a great script. He, yeah, I like how he writes and stuff. I don't know. That's interesting. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I just... Yeah, it's just not for me. Um, okay. But... So, this is actually... I didn't know this was a thing until I was researching it. But this is... Apparently, there's, like, a little metaphorical trilogy that him and Simon Pegg kind of, like, thought up. Um, and it's called the Three Flavors Cornetto Trilogy. And Cornetto is like an ice cream, I guess. Yeah, it's no really idea. Good, honestly. Oh, really? You've had it's it? It's like a British thing, yeah. Oh, I probably had it when I was over there and I just don't remember. But, um, Google to make sure I'm thinking about the same great thing. But yeah, so this is the first installment. Um, and I'll get... Oh, they have these here. Oh! Oh, I love these. I don't know why I thought this was a British thing. I think I'm thinking of like the soft serve that you get with the flake in it. Oh. Is this a British thing? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what they look like. I, I feel like this that, is a It's this thing. because it's there's three different flavors and that's each movie supposed to represent a different one. Um, okay, so um, uh, whatever. So back to Sean of the Dead. Um, so the plot is Sean, played by Simon Pegg, doesn't have a very good day. So he decides to turn his life around by getting his ex to take him back. But he times it right in the middle of what may be a zombie apocalypse. But for him, it's an opportunity to show everyone he knows how to be useful. He knows how useful he is by saving them all. All he has to do is survive and get his ex back. Also, when I read that little chunk about the girl, like him and the girl at age 12, I was like, oh, my God, this explains so much. (laughs) That's it. Yeah. (laughs) That's all I had to say about that. Um, It was. Yeah, there's like um, like it's very inspired by George A. Romero and Sam Raimi, like. Or the, like the big zombie movies that kind of like inspired every other zombie movie. Um, even the name's like a riff on that. And I think it's, you know what you're going in for when mm-hmm. the title is like a pun and like you see the post, like you know what it's going to be. Yeah. Um, also, Lucy Davis. I love her. I love Lucy Davis. I only, I had only seen her in like Sabrina. Oh, yeah. She's like one of the aunts mm-hmm. and I love her and I just think she's great. So, anyways, that's. Oh, I don't know. Do you yeah, have I was like, why does this blonde woman look so familiar? And that's, that's where it <laughs> She's is. She's one of the ones, yeah. yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on... Um, no. Yeah, that's it. I just feel like okay about it. Yeah. yeah. It's like good good for Edgar that he did this. <laughs> um, I do enjoy like him and Sam and Peg's like, like friendships. I do yeah. enjoy that. And they, they make fun things. Mm-hmm. It's like just friends like making stuff and that's kind of like how it should be. Yeah, it has the vibes of like two straight guys who like um they got a film camera and they're like let's just make whatever we want. Yeah, that's what their movies are like. Um, okay, so more about the Three Flavors Cornetto trilogy. So it originates from a a joke during the promotion of Hot Fuzz, which is the next one that we're going to talk about. Um, and in the script, he had written in that Cornetto ice cream is the hangover cure. Um, for Frost's character in Shaun of the Dead, um, and he's this is like his own 
hangover cure. Like it's um, that's probably real life. And so at the party for the film, they got they gave them free ice cream. And so they were like, we're going to write this into every single one so that we can get more free ice cream. <laughs> and it didn't work. Um, but then they use this to kind of like plan out a trilogy that it's kind of like American Horror Story in terms of like all the same actors playing different roles. Um, and there's going to be themes that like come back and like are kind of wrapped up in different movies. Um, and then what kind of ties them all together is the ice cream. <laughs> um, I just think these are really cool because like you yeah. can't make things like this anymore. No. They're going to be like, sh- have one of the characters show up in the other one. Yeah. We need a universe. Um, so this is the way it's split up. So Shaun of the Dead features a strawberry flavored Cornetto, which signifies the film's bloody and gory elements. Hot Fuzz includes the blue original Cornetto to signify the police element to the film. And The World's End features the green mint chocolate chip flavor um, shown only by a rapper caught in the wind, representing the little green men and science fiction. It's so funny because like I do this. Like when yeah. I'm making my movies, I'm like, like something will accidentally make sense. I'm like, that's the reason why. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> like, sure, let's go with it and let's run with it. Um, it's fun when that happens. I uh, think it's so fun because yeah. it's just like fun to have like extra meaning to your stuff and like people that really are like the your stands your know. stands. Yeah. Like it's just fun to create that like type of. It's like an inside joke with you. Yeah, and your, your exactly. Stands. Your stands. Um. <laughs> Anyways, so that leads us to the second part of the trilogy, Hot Fuzz, which was released in 2007, um, also directed by Edgar Wright, also written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, um, starring Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and Martin Freeman. Um, And the plot is a skilled London police officer, after irritating superiors with his embarrassing effectiveness, is transferred to a village where the easygoing officers object to his fervor. I don't know what that word means. For regulations, as a string of grisly murders strikes the town. It's basically, he is like a really like, by the book police officer okay. and throughout like he he's like really boring and throughout <laughs> the movie is like hot fuzz it's like he's embracing kind of like the action star in him fun for the police i haven't seen this movie that yet. was such a weird way to put this movie but i, I get it, it in, was like, on google in forms or google yeah i right. get it but like that that that's what the movie's about okay okay yeah did you do you like it yeah i don't really like cop movies no a cap but like i this sounds like a fun um (laughs) like um that was not a joke by the way um that was like like end of watch though you know that movie with jake gyllenhaal i know we don't like jake gyllenhaal in this month but (laughs) (laughs) no i don't i don't know what that is i really like that movie maybe i don't i don't think i've seen a cop movie that i enjoyed but like i like like um like TV, well, like procedurals are like fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Just because like the crime element, mm-hmm. I don't know. But they're not real cops, and like they make them so liberal that I'm like, okay, well I know this is not real. <laughs> That's a good point. Anyways, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Okay, but That's okay, different. yeah, yeah. They're, they're like a satire of yeah. cops. Yeah. Anyways, this <laughs> is also a satire of cops, and also it's different because it's a British police. Yeah. So it's I don't know. Also, I thought okay, I was like cop, buddy cop movies. I'm just like I don't care. I'm not, it's not for me. Even when they gender swap it and it's like girls now, I'm like I still don't care. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. Um, like the Gabrielle Union and Jessica Alba show or whatever. It's doing well though. Yeah, it's still on. So people, no people like love it, them. People love, but it's just it. not for me. I just like a Law and Order. How many seasons? Yeah. What did I say? Oh, I was reading the trivia for this. Um, movie and i saw that like a lot of the lines they took from like a lot of the lines that these characters say they like interviewed real life policemen Mm -hmm. and they were like so ridiculous that they wrote them into the movie i was like t yeah that's so funny i love that i feel like that happens a lot with cop movies because i don't know what it is like cops are ridiculous Okay. Well, with every, <laughs> with every cop movie, like, you know, when they do the interviews, they're always like, yeah, I, I got to hang out with some cops and do a couple of ride arounds. Every single interview yeah. like that person is playing a cop. They did that. And I just like, is that required? Like, no, at this they just point? really want to hang out with cops. Or like, maybe they're just trying to get ideas for like the storylines. But I think like, they were like, they're definitely making butt up cops, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. I okay, fair. So. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> 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 um, I feel like most of the buddy cop things are making fun of cops, but I don't know. I think it's just like maybe cops aren't understanding that they're they making. Are, bu- yeah, they definitely don't. I don't know. I don't know what they think. Wait, also, I just reminded my mom dragged me to see this one movie with Dwayne Johnson and Kevin Hart, and it was a buddy cop movie. Oh yeah, I know exactly. Don't what even remember about. what it was called. I was like, oh my god. I don't care. Nope. Anyways, okay, this I didn't even know it existed, but so. Um, in 2007, Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez um, released a movie called Grindhouse. I didn't know about the movie, but I didn't know about this little part of it. Um, and it's supposed to be an homage to exploitation films of the 1970s. I hate this genre of movie. 
Can you explain what exploitation felt Yeah, like so the they're audience? just like over the top. Let me look up what the, I was going to say legal definition. Like the official definition is of it. Um, but they're essentially just over the top just by the name, I don't think I would like it. No, it's like, okay. So Wikipedia said, <laughs> I'm using Wikipedia as a source, whatever. An exploitation film is a film that attempts to succeed financially by exploiting current trends, niche genres, or lurid content. Um, they're generally considered low quality B movies. They sometimes attract critical attention and cult followings. Ooh, would a would a modern example be scary movie? Sure. Mm, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Let's see. There's so many sub genres of it. Look at this. Oh my god, that is a very long list. I don't know. I didn't even know this genre existed. I didn't know Tarantino like did cannibal this. Films. I had no idea. Black exploitation biker film. Like, there's so many. Okay. So I don't know. what I'm getting from this is that they don't age well. For the most Sometimes part. it for like Night of the Living Dead Depends could be considered. Sub-genre. Yeah, I don't know. It just it's really fifty fifty with these. <laughs> um, but so that so that's what this movie is. It's kind of like um an homage to that. And so the movie is a double feature. So one of the halves is directed by Quentin Tarantino, and then the other half is directed by Robert Rodriguez. Um, and they kind of uh, pay homage to different kinds of exploitation films. If you like that, good for you. Quentin Tarantino fans, I'm sure, loved it. Um, but throughout the movie, it has five fake slash spoof trailers. Um, and one of the ones in it is called Don't. And it makes fun of like horror cliches. And it's directed by Edgar Wright. And when I was writing this, I was like, oh, I wonder what that's like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I looked it up. <laughs> Did you watch it? Yeah. What would you think of it? I don't know. I'm in such like a weird mood today. Because I... of that time of the month. And I'm just like, <laughs> nothing is like getting to me now this is just even the eternals like when i was watching that i was like i feel like i should be feeling something but <laughs> my emotions are just like not correct you know my <laughs> hormones okay are just like not in the right place i'm just not feeling reactive it was like funny <laughs> i guess but like it's nothing like, like like i said i think i mentioned this last week i would like horror cliches and being like oh my god horror cliches are so like i know we Maybe know everyone knows saw this when it came out it would be a little bit more interesting, but because Maybe, we've seen yeah. like scary mm, movie, like yeah, all these like, things. Yeah, because like horror is kind of having like a a renaissance period right now. Yeah. It's like eh. 2007. Yeah, I'm sure this was groundbreaking for 2007. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like it directed fun. Yeah. Sure. It was very fast paced. It's it yeah. two minutes long. Yeah. So. Um, it's on YouTube if you guys want to watch it. Go, Edgar. This is a foreshadowing to his later work. Oh yeah, and like his upcoming. He definitely was like, sure. "I want to do horror," and like no one let him until now. Yeah, I wonder what that's about. Well, I guess Shaun of, mm, Shaun of the Dead kind of. Yeah, but I feel like this is like. He wanted last night in Soho. Is, yeah, this is yeah. like the more like raunchier, like kind of like suggestive. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, take it away. <laughs> Anyways, oh Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, 2010, directed by Edgar Wright, based on the graphic novels by Brian Lee <laughs> O'Malley. And written by Edgar Wright and Michael Bacall, starring Michael Sarah, Anna Kendrick, Chris Evans, Kieran Culkin, Aubrey Plaza, and Mary Elizabeth, Elizabeth Winstead. And there's like so many other people. And this cast is iconic. It aged terribly well. Oh, yeah. I was like, uh-oh. Why'd you Google her? Because <laughs> I wanted to know what else Harley she's Quinn. in. Harley Quinn. She was in the new Harley Quinn movie. Oh, my God. She's Huntress. Yeah. Period. She, but she does. Oh, she did Kate, 10 Cloverfield Lane. She's doing so well. Yeah, I love her. Oh, she did. Is that Quentin Tarantino? She was in Sky High. She was the villain in Sky High. <laughs> <laughs> That's iconic. I love her. Yeah, I love Queen. her. I love pretty much everybody on this cast. <laughs> I, I knew <laughs> she was. guess the person I don't really love. Mm, that was a rhetorical question. Don't answer it. Uh, wait, I literally don't know. Anna Kendrick. I oh. She's such a bitch. Oh, me too. Du moi. More than that. Like, there's <laughs> been so many stories of her being terrible that's so, scary that's i mean me. like i'll have to see it with my eyes but honestly if there's that many people talking speaking out about how you're being disrespectful babe, but, okay the cup song was cool <laughs> but you need to take take yourself down and not before also, i did you know that they dated for like a who? really long time edgar wright? anna kendrick and edgar wright dated i see it but like really i do see it genuinely huh maybe i just don't know enough but about i I, I definitely see them as stuff. exes i don't see them <laughs> ending up together does that do you ever see people and you're like i know you dated and it didn't go well no oh maybe that's, just me that's interesting yeah i don't know what that's about so, right, yeah i don't know what that's about either <laughs> what the heck what was anyways, i gonna say but anyways i know this movie is like extremely polarizing and like it's valid the yeah points that were made up were extremely valid 
but I don't think I I think I was just so far and deep with this film <laughs> that like I don't think anybody could like take me out of loving it. Mm-hmm. You know, and like I get like the criticism like Ramona is like n- like the manic pixie dream girl, but like that's not what I took out of it when I watched it the first <laughs> yeah, time. No. And I think it I think it really does depend on like maybe what you got out of the movie versus like what other people got out of the movie and what they didn't like and that both are fair in my opinion. Yeah. You know, but I know you don't like Scott and no. I, I get Mm, that's not an unpopular opinion i just you're not alone i saw this for the first time last year Mm -hmm. during the pandemic because i i was like why is everyone like that's jarring i have a whole decade on you for watching it that is jarring as fuck yeah i'd never seen it but what (laughs) what made me watch it was the um the clip of captain marvel i forgot her name brie larson is that her name yes singing that little song it like went viral on tiktok i was like i need to see the context i don't know what's going on and then that I start- did something to me when I was younger. Yeah. I was like, I want to be her. I know she's so like supposed good. to be kind of the villain, but I love her. It's okay. Yeah. The platinum blonde hair, the way it was, and then the way she the just song? the song, like the I cuts, don't know how what the song did. cuts, like yes. how the like the guitar riffs like cut to the so good. That's where I saw the movie. The opening scene is like <laughs> yeah great. The title, how they get to yeah. the title card. Don't you have a story about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. So I saw that on um, IMDb. Apparently, okay. Also, didn't know Quentin Tarantino and Edgar Wright were besties. But I had no idea. It's like so clear. Like I don't know how I missed. It makes this. a lot of sense. They're, like yeah. considering like both of their filmographies. Yeah, it makes a lot that of sense. that they get along. Um, but apparently the film only had a title card at the beginning, um, and Quentin Tarantino was the one who suggested that uh, there should be like a pre-title credit sequence because the remaining ensemble of characters who hadn't been introduced yet would have been introduced like faster, and it would have been like overwhelming for the audience so that's why they kind of gave them like it says with a pre-title sequence the audience is given a chance to relax and have a firmer grasp on the beginning of the film um right considered this and agreed and like the idea that the first scene would not be a prologue Pro- how do you say that Pro- prologue a prologue anyways i just thought yeah. that was interesting i do i really enjoy when movies don't just start with like you know how like they start with like a scenery and like a musical score yeah and then they show it and then they you meet the characters yeah. i really like when movies have like a whole like scene yeah and then it leads to a title card i feel like that's much more impactful i think so too because well it depends on the kind of movie mm, yeah i think the only movie where i'm like okay with it opening with scenery is the shining because it serves a purpose but if it's like you know the other i was like what's another example of somebody that does what scott pilgrim does and the first thing i thought of was la la land <laughs> oh yeah. yeah that was a good <gasps> one too we we love all land here. Oh yeah, we I have no shame about it. <laughs> uh, but wait, no, you're right. No, well, but it kind of it kind of like subverts it because it's like look at all these people. They have nothing to do with the story, and then um, but they Sebastian do because and it's like yeah, they're supposed it's like Sebastian and Mia are supposed to be like they're like in the traffic of people. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Because everyone's interconnected. Period. Whatever. Love LA. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I I don't know. Like I. I think it's just so visually appealing yeah. and like as like an I, well, how old was I in 2010 like 12 like yeah I think I was 12 12 or 11 and it just was such a good movie for me to watch at the age I don't know yeah, yeah you know like I just simply took it visually mm-hmm. and that's all I took it for I didn't that's really enough. think that hard about like the relationships and stuff no like one that. does when we're kids but, like I get if you're like older and like you're watching it yeah. like if you're in high school and if you're in college watching it for the first time now because yeah. it's on Netflix yeah. and you're seeing these relationships like that's a totally oh. fair yeah I didn't even fair finish argument <laughs> I like forgot that I was talking about like my experience watching it so I just didn't like Scott but I was like that's fine like whatever like because again like usually An ensemble cast yeah yeah, yeah. It. usually if I don't like a main character that does not affect my viewing experience because mm-hmm. I think unlikable characters are fun if. That's what the story refreshing. needs. I honestly really think it's refreshing. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you know, you kind of want an anti-hero or somebody, I mean, even not an anti-hero, like it's okay to not like the main yeah. character sometimes. I think the thing for me was like, I just genuinely was not rooting for Scott. I wasn't rooting for, like, I just didn't care about what was going on. I was like, I'm just looking at it because it's pretty. If I watched it for the first time, like yesterday, I would hate Scott so deeply. And like, <laughs> it would definitely like change the way I viewed it. And like, every time I watch it, I take something different out yeah. of it. But also, is it that deep? of a movie no and that's okay and it's just so funny and the music is funny and it's just like 
I also really like it in forms of an adaptation because, and that's why I think this is why I was so sad about the Ant-Man thing. Which oh, we'll get to, okay, yeah. Is because like, I feel like a lot of times when things like are adapted from graphic novels and comics, sometimes like in case of Marvel, it takes itself too seriously. <laughs> and like, I'm like, DC too, yeah. but like comics are fun. And the yeah. whole point is that it doesn't make sense. So the mm-hmm. fact that now, which is like, I don't know, like I do like to some degree enjoy what Marvel Cinematic Universe is doing. But a part of me is like, can we just have like a one off silly <laughs> movie about a random superhero that doesn't really like have yeah. to like coincide with the thing, which is what the anime movie honestly ended up becoming. I don't think that was the intention. Right. Well, Guardians of the Galaxy also kind of. It's like ridiculous, yeah, but like. Yeah. But yeah, that's another example I was thinking of. But like. I don't know, man. I really, that's why I like this movie a lot because, like, I really like how it it does, you can tell it's based off a graphic novel. And yeah. like, I really like how it leans into, like, the nerdy aspects of it. Period. And I was extremely nerdy when this movie came out. Mm-hmm. Like, very much, <laughs> I can't, I'm very much cringy when I look back on it. Yeah. But <laughs> my 11, 12 year old self watching this movie was having such a good time, especially, like, watch, binge wa- reading all the novels and stuff. Uh-huh. It was like, so fun but i'm really sad that it didn't become a series you know oh is it oh, just the first book no they like meshed all the books together oh uh, okay pretty much but there's a lot more that happens mm, okay like i like how it ends i think it did a really good job actually no it is the f- i think it might be the first and sec- they took aspects of the second book mm. but there's a lot more that happens um that would have been a great series well everyone kind of got famous after this no no i don't remember because like now it's been like a decade Uh since i read the fucking books but i actually know i think it is all of them because i think each book was a different x or something oh so they they, okay yeah from what i recall i don't really remember that makes sense for uh, yeah but i think maybe and also the ending is different from the graphic novels because i don't think the last graphic novel was out yet before the oh movie, you okay know. okay anyways i think it's really fun it's a fun movie when i watched it in 2010 and i still <laughs> think it's fun now and i think the criticisms are valid um I think and aspects of like scott like just any man like <laughs> manic pixie dream girling yeah a girl i don't love <gasps> but like i'm not taking that's not what i'm right. focusing on wait what was that thing you sent me that it was like the male equivalent of a manic pixie dream girl is Oh, the like bad boy, like that's uh, ah, fuck. I don't oh remember. God, it was so funny, but yeah. Um. It anyways, made so much sense though. Yeah, I did. Um. I think I think the thing is, if you saw it when it first came out, you like it still, and if you saw it recently, you don't like it. I feel like that's what it is. Yeah, and that's okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm satisfied with that. I think it's because like I am a Libra, <laughs> so like I am a people pleaser, and <laughs> like I do carry what other people think. Right. closely because i want to make sure everyone's ha- like heard in in general so like i think when people overtly hate things that i love it like sends me like a little bit into a spiral about it but i have to remind myself mm-hmm. like that's not the message i got from it and also like i have like a childhood memory attached yeah, to it. so yeah, like yeah. i just need to like work on that that's a therapy thing yeah <laughs> for sure <laughs> um, um, it it's so fun yeah visually it's stylized like the the um what's it called the soundtrack is like amazing it definitely inspired a lot of other movies like non edgar wright movies mm-hmm. um so even edgar wright movies yeah the baby driver honestly okay this next one I literally did not know he wrote this at all the, yeah. i was so confused when i saw this on the list yeah, i was me, like huh me too the Adventures of Tintin came out in 2011, directed by Steven Spielberg, a screenplay by Edgar Wright, Stephen Moffat, and Joe Cornish. And the plot is an intrepid reporter named Tintin and Captain Haddock set off on an adventure hunt. Oh, my God. What? Treasure. Set off on a treasure hunt for a sunken ship commanded by Haddock's ancestor. <laughs> Did you watch this? I didn't even know this movie existed. I, with peace it's, ca- it's a cartoon movie. It's like an animated, like, I don't know what it is. What um, thing? Was this like the era of Coraline? Because I remember Maybe so a many after, movies yeah. like that came out like within like the five years. Of I just day. like let me show. For some reason, it did not look appealing to me at all, and I just didn't watch it. Um, and I don't know if a lot of people did. I don't think so. Look, that's so ugly to me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I hate the. He's like a dog. 
that yeah the animation's a little unsettling i i don't know i hate that style of animation um it's like it looks like claymation but it isn't it's like computer it's like it, kind of like monster house what is that called monster house is claymation oh you're right i don't know like 3d animation oh yeah i don't know i hate it grossing me out yeah um i feel like now it's better because technology has gone a little bit it's better. okay when it's like not humans for me like seeing yeah, well yeah i'm yeah. like oh that's fine because yeah. i know that that's not what they look like <laughs> i don't know i don't and know they're anamorphic yeah. yeah but when it's like humans like it just looks a little weird it's like uncanny valley and you're like i can't look at this <laughs> anyways i have nothing to say about this <laughs> yeah i don't know why you put it on because i had to i wanted to really it, it, his whole discography I wanted to really include it. Yeah, whatever. Um, the World's End. So this is the third part of the Cornetto trilogy. I didn't know it came out like after all of these other things. I definitely thought it came out before in a row, Scott yeah. Pilgrim. Um, it came out in 2013, and it's the third part of the trilogy. Um, again, directed by Edgar Wright, written by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg, and starring Simon Pegg, Nick Frost, and Martin Freeman. Um, do you like this movie? I feel okay about it. <laughs> yeah, same. I, I I like the concept though. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like maybe you know this is the like, end of it better if if they're like barely related but it's like it's a similar feeling it's like a comedy apocalypse um, movie fuck what was i gonna say my hormones i don't know what's <laughs> going on with me right now i feel like i have pregnancy brain and i'm not even pregnant <laughs> lord have mercy anyways Oh, you know how like when you're like in the peak of an obsession with something oh. and like literally like you take everything intensely seriously yeah. and like even though like you know and you're deep down like you didn't really like you just feel okay about it. You didn't like love it, but you like for some reason this is a whole personality trait. So everything mm-hmm. is like top tier level. That's how I was at the <laughs> point about Edgar Wright <laughs> and also Brockhampton. So like <laughs> literally everything I was like everything he does is just like. T- top tier cinema you know and um when i watched it i was like trying so hard to really like it you know yeah you know you know that feeling and it sucks when it doesn't live up to that and so to it the broke people it. that still do that because i know there's a lot of people that still do that yeah. it's okay to not love something that someone you love put out yeah it's okay if it's just mid you can still be a stand not everything is gonna be a hit yeah and that would it would honestly be a little suspicious if it was yeah because then it'd be like <laughs> okay so you're just being loyal for yeah. no reason i remember when i was in london there's a bar there was a bar called the world's end and i was like immediately stopped my friend that i was with and i was like <laughs> you have to go in there and get a drink I don't think it had any correlation to the movie. <laughs> Period. Maybe it was named because of the movie. I'm thinking that's maybe what it was. It, yeah, I'm sure. Well, was it shot I, in London? Yeah. Oh, then maybe. Yeah, I think it was named after the movie. Like, somebody really loved that movie. And, like, I don't know when it um, <laughs> existed, like, when it was established. I have no idea. But I just saw the world's end, and I was like, ah, I think I need to go there. Hmm. Oh, wait, the bars in the movie are fake. Just kidding. Yeah, the bars in the movie are fake. Like, it's like a bunch of different... It's like a bar qual... Okay. Have you ever watched it? Yeah, the one where they they're okay. trying to like the world is ending and they're going to a bunch of different ones and they're like yeah, drunk the whole like, time. Yeah, you know how like the the trope, which like after we did that, I was like, there's so many tropes we didn't cover. Yeah, we I, we there was no way. There was no way we could do um, an episode per could, genre, but it's just not that interesting. Honestly. Yeah, um, but you know the trope where it's like the one there's like the one friend that's like has an ulterior motive to like, yeah. get all his friends together, and then mm-hmm. all the friends are just doing it because they love their friend, and then like it just get goes off the wall you know that's that, like a yeah trope. that's like a comedy like trope a, yeah yeah exactly and that's what this movie is so yeah Good for them it's okay yeah. i feel like if i was like a british man that enjoyed drinking i would love this movie but i'm not and i'm sure a lot of his audience is that oh yeah 100 percent. maybe not anymore yeah but he's diversified a little bit yeah. but when he was first coming out absolutely um I really need to look into that bar situation. Yeah, because I go there right now, but I was I was I couldn't yeah. go into it. But um, Ant Man, almost. Okay. Mm-hmm. There's a lot. I've never I've I because of this I've never watched any of the Ant Man movies, but I do enjoy Pim's Kitchen and it's Disneyland. So God, it's so good. It is so good. That, that made me so hungry. Guys, yeah. The chicken sandwich and the honey buzz are like my recommendations. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Anyways. Okay, there's a lot going on. Okay, so Kim, okay, well, please. For those who don't lead know, the way, yeah. Ant Man, the movie, the Marvel 
cinematic universe <laughs> movie starring was paul rudd. <laughs> starring paul rudd which we love <gasps> we, we love, love paul rudd. rudd and fun fact edgar wright uh, we'll get there hold on okay um so edgar wright was supposed to direct this movie and he like it's like a passion project of yeah. his like even before like all of the movies he on started this in list. 2006 2003 2003 sorry that's insane mm-hmm. 2003 wow. was when he started like putting together the pieces to uh write the screenplay and <sighs> sorry i'm just like really distressed about this, this <laughs> um <laughs> but basically like it just didn't happen obviously so there's like a bunch of things that happened so there was somebody else besides like marvel and disney that owned the rights and they made what was the movie that they made i think it was the punisher oh with, with john Tra- was it just john travolta no, it's um I know what you're talking about, the original Punisher movie. I watched it on a bus. <laughs> Anyways, the original Punisher movie that was not great. Oh, what is John Travolta? Yeah, it's John Travolta. Ew, wait, right, this is not the one I was weird? thinking of. Oh, but he's not t- okay, he's in the movie, but it's Thomas J. I don't know who that but is. But didn't they use John Travolta on the poster? Yeah, he's on the poster. I have a vivid memory of John Travolta like, being on the poster. Okay, yeah, that's what I remember. I don't remember that other man. I just remember John Travolta. I've never watched the movie. Crazy to me that it came on Toes and Four. That's when they were like <laughs> flopping on like yeah. the Green Lantern. Like, Superhero moves were in their flop era <laughs> in that part. Yeah, but all all phoenixes must rise from the ashes, as they say. <laughs> um. Anyways, so Edgar Wright had like this is his passion project, and he they were going to make it, but then the company that had the rights were like we want to do like more like a friend like a family friendly. Oh my god, you know the movie Ghost Rider with Nicolas yeah. Cage. I don't know. I've never watched it since I saw it on HBO Max. I need to rewatch it again because I remember watching it in theaters and being obsessed with it for some reason. Oh, I know. I don't know why I just thought of that. I think I was just in the headspace of like terrible movies mm. before the <laughs> and okay. see you. Um, and so they made the Punisher right after they were like, I don't like your script. And so <laughs> then I kind of just was like in the air, whatever. Like it just seemed like it wasn't going to get made. But I guess Edgar Wright ran into kevin feige yeah and they got along at first and so they were like Yikes. they were like talking about like how they were gonna make iron man and stuff and like how marvel was like starting to be like be a thing and yeah. like whatever they th- were talking about that time i don't know and <laughs> um so basically Edgar Wright told him that he wanted to make an Ant-Man movie and then basically Kevin Feige i'm assuming was like yeah for sure you can make it because they didn't know they didn't know, they didn't know what was going on they had what no fucking clue yeah honey you got a big storm coming yeah, no, literally. literally and then to the point where when the first one of the first comic cons where they introduced um marvel to yeah. like like movies to the people they like brought out edgar wright and told them and he told them that there, he was going to make an ant-man movie and everyone was like really excited about it but then they made iron man with um john favreau which I also love him. Um, and Iron Man was like a huge success, whatever. Again, like they Marvel, like kind of focused on other things. And then it finally got to the time where they were ready to make Ant-Man a thing. T. And then um, Edgar Wright like had some like, he got to like test run it. Yeah. Well, okay. I don't know the timeline. This is where the timeline gets like blurry a little yeah. bit, but basically him and Kevin Feige started like having like little tiffs, I guess mm-hmm. ah, to be a fly on those, like the walls or like, An apart, wall. like, Oh my God. <laughs> um, and <gasps> he, they like had a lot of disagreements. One being casting, which oh. Marvel wanted, you know who Marvel wanted? I don't. Marvel wanted Joseph Gordon Levitt to be Ant-Man. Oh, okay. And, but uh, Edgar Wright wanted Paul Rudd. And so that was like the first fight. Why did they want Joseph Gordon? Like, he was bigger then, I feel like, around that time. I see it, but yeah. um, I, I like Paul Rudd more. Yeah. I, I think Paul makes, Rudd is, is Ant Man. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense to me, honestly. Yeah. Um, and. He looks a little more rugged. <laughs> and Ant Man is like a criminal, so. Imagine Justin Gordon. Because in my head, I don't have any clue how tall Joseph Gordon Levitt is, but he's tiny to me. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't want to know how tall he is. I, yeah, it I'm needs to be a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna think about it too hard. But <laughs> no, to no, me, no. he's a small guy. Sure. Watch him be like like five eleven. He's, he's, I don't think he's menacing. Is what it is. <laughs> yeah, I think I don't. Know. I don't know, 
Because wasn't he Robin in a version of Batman? He was supposed to be. Like, they were leading up to it, but then it never happened. Oh, yeah. But he's, like, in the one yep, with yeah. um, Heath Lee. Mm-hmm. I think I don't I, I don't want the Batman fans to attack me because I don't Christian remember if it's Bale, that one. Right. Yeah, I think so. You're right. Christian Bale and Hathaway. That one? Uh, maybe. I think it was that one. There's so many Batman movies. Because I have a I have a memory of Anne Hathaway and Joseph Gordon. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah, together. yeah. Together. Yeah, they have a scene together. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I knew that yeah, for some yeah. reason. Um so that was like the first fight and then the second fight was about the script. And I think that must have been really hard for Edgar Wright to walk away from. Yeah. Because he's the one that walked away and you know when he walked away? What? He walked away like a month before. There was to Maybe? Oh, wait, wait, hold on. There's another story. Oh. Before you go. Okay. But they had another Comic-Con, right? And yeah. Ted Edgar Wright was able to do some like test footage. Yeah, I found he it online it. right now. Yeah, he brought it to Comic-Con and fans loved it. The they suit? They were eating that shit up. Yeah, I don't know if this is the suit. This doesn't look like the suit they used in the movie. I really like this one. I don't think it's the one they use now, but I. it looks a lot more like the comic one with the little head. Like... It looks like an ant. Yeah. Which, T. fitting. <laughs> this, um, I think this is the one. I don't know. I really like that but suit. But the fact that it got to the point where like he was even like able to, that would never happen now. Maybe it was and like a threat. He was like, I'm going to leave if you don't let me do what I want. And I'm like, okay. And he was like, oh, okay, I'm leaving then. I feel like that's, maybe it was like to be like, I let don't me do know what if I want. it was like that. I just feel like there was too many arguments and he's like, I just, he just realized it was never going to okay. go his way. Like the quote, he has a he has a thing. I'm not going to read it directly, but he after people obviously asked about it, because like, why would you walk away from a Marvel movie? Yeah. This was like kind of peak Marvel times, you know, yeah. like when people started realizing like, oh, this is like going to be a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Phase what too? I don't know. He was basically saying like, I don't think Marvel realized like I was OK making a Marvel movie, but I don't think Marvel was OK making an Edgar Wright movie. And I was I like, hope the script leaks. <laughs> I would love to see what the original script was. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, especially because I, from what I gather, I've never watched an Ant-Man movie. The only Ant-Man interactions I get is when he's in the Avenger movies. <laughs> I'll get it. I'll get it. I'm getting over, They're good, I'm yeah. over it. I yeah. just, I just feel like it's so <laughs> far in the past. Like, why am I going to watch it now? Well, you still should. Oh, they're good. Especially yeah. the second one. Um, Michelle but, Pfeiffer's in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Oh, I thought that would. I know. I, I like Michelle Pfeiffer, but not enough to go back and watch it. Like, because from what I gather, like people, everybody I tell, I talk to, they're like, it's okay, you can skip those ones. Really? I love the Ant Man movies. No, but like in aspects of like Grand- it, it interacting with the rest of the oh. universe, like it, like it gave you it, the only reason they're relevant really is because of the technology it brings. Yeah, um, that's the only reason it's relevant. But also, Lily, what's her name, Lily? The girl, Evangeline Lilly, she's the wasp. Love her. Mm-hmm. Watch it for that. Maybe just watch the second one then, I guess. Mm. I okay. don't think I will, to be honest. <laughs> how It depends on how long they are. If they're if they're like it's, an hour 40, I'll consider. It's, they're definitely not that long because like, <laughs> they're like, or it's like Marvel has, it, uh, is this, this is a new thing. Oh my God, what did I Google? <laughs> um. Okay, let's see. It is. An hour 40. It's not uh, at the top. Oh no. I can't see guys. I, it's like nowhere. Look up Ant Man runtime. Oh yeah. Why did you uh, just type in Ant Man? I don't know. I just assumed it would be there. No. Oh, mm, that's Sorry. long. <laughs> wow. It's two hours long. I'm like, why are they that long? Uh, yeah. Sorry. That's why I've never. I tried rewatching the Marvel movies, and I was like, no. The I already know what happens. I, I don't care. That watch them in timeline order. I'm like, what? I was uh, Grace and I were trying to do it, and I, we couldn't. We did, we stopped at like. That's a lot of I, hours invested. Yeah, it's not like Harry Potter where you could get it done in like a weekend. Oh yeah, it's like no. invest a week, maybe a month, because you has li- like lives to live. Yeah, maybe three months, honestly. Yeah. Oh god. Mm, no. Anyways, anyways, uh, rip. So, I just, I just feel really bad for him. I mean, the thing is, like, he's never gonna like talk super bad about it no. because he doesn't. That's a terrible, um, bridge to burn. Yeah, I feel like Don't we will that. get an Edgar Wright Marvel movie at some point because they're bridging off into Maybe so when many. Maybe Kevin Feige leaves, because I think he, Kevin Feige seems like a type of person. But peace and love, Kevin Feige. I love you. I don't know why I'm like doing a heart yeah, because no, it's off, but like I'm giving you a heart, Kevin yeah. Feige. <laughs> Please, I love you. He's Keep smart. You're good. No, he's super he knows smart. What he's doing. And like to his advantage, like. And like I get it because Marvel would not be what it is without him. Mm-hmm. But I do feel like that comes with the ego to some degree. And oh. that's not a bad thing at all. Yeah. Like to know what you are looking for. And when you're in charge of like this whole massive ship, like yeah. totally get that. But I think, 
you know how like now with Chloe Zhao and Eternals, yeah. like I think it was just like right person, wrong time. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I really do think Edgar Wright's like director take on things Wait. would have fit very well with the character of Ant-Man. Like from what I gather, what Ant-Man is like, he seemed very comedic, but also smart. Oh, why did I think he was directing the new one? It's not. It's Peyton Reed. I don't even know who that. Sorry, but I thought he was directing the third one. Mm-mm. I was like, wait, I did see that, but then no, because it would have shown up in his upcoming projects. Yeah. Rip. Um. I so I just think it was just like Edgar Wright realized like they Marvel does not want to make an sucks. Edgar Wright movie. Yeah. And I think it probably took like a lot of like will. Ten he, years. He put in so much time on this. And like it sucks because I feel like everybody should, especially when you have like all of this like good stuff behind you yeah. and also ahead of you. Um, but also it is a good thing that it didn't happen because we wouldn't have gotten Baby Driver, which is my favorite <laughs> Edgar Wright movie, okay. despite the cast. Great transition. <laughs> um, so Baby Driver was released in 2017, directed and written by Edgar Wright. This is his first solo director and writer. All the other ones have a, like collaborations. This is Edgar Wright, Edgar Wright. His baby. Um, starring Ansel Elgort, John Hamm, John Berthal, Lily James. Um, anyways. Isaac so, Gonzalez. Yeah, a whole lot of people. Jamie Foxx. That's it. You're missing That's, two people. Yeah. Kevin Spacey. Oh. I, no. He doesn't exist. You're right. Who's I don't that? know who that is. <laughs> After being coerced into working for a crime boss, a young getaway driver finds himself taking part in a heist doomed to fail. Um, he like meant he calls it like a musical, um, like a heist musical. I love sure, I agree with so that. So fucking much. Um, oh my god, I just remember something. So one time I was at Amoeba. It's like a record store in LA, and they had a copy of the Baby Driver soundtrack, and it was signed by Edgar Wright, and it was like up on the wall, so it was like expensive, and I was like, oh, I want that, but I'll get it another day. And then like no. I went back one day to like specifically get that not there no and i will think about it every day for the rest of my life <laughs> so sad and it wasn't that it was like 80 like it wasn't like an oh, insane price not bad i was oh, so poor were... i was so yeah, poor that's fair like now i would have done it in a heartbeat yeah back then i was like it would have been like I you're not eating this week <laughs> i'd have been like hey mom can i <laughs> you yeah. 20 bucks can oh, we go? i went i was yelling i'm like can we go have this no yeah i didn't even have a record player yet oh my it was like when one of the times we went and like i was just like well it is what it is it is what it is i was with you um, I don't know because you would have bought it, no? So no. No, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Oh, I don't really care maybe about you were. things, to be honest. It was just like a fun little thing. Yeah. Anyways. It's probably worth a lot of money now. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, this I love this movie because it was like one of the movies that I watched where I was watching it and it inspired me to be a filmmaker. This again. is like on your letterbox, no? On your four films or no? Mm-mm. Oh, just kidding. I thought it was. <laughs> it only isn't because of the cast. Oh, T. Okay, that's fair. Um, I have some fun trivia about it, but you if it's, talk about your personal experience with that first, and then I'll do the trivia. Um, you know how like I don't know. I feel like now there's not a lot of movies that like motivate me. You know, like oh. it, like re-energize me. Yeah. To like I don't know what it is with my brain, what is going on. No, yeah. But there's not a lot of movies that do that for me anymore. And this was one of those movies that where I was like, oh fuck i am inspired let yeah. me get on my little no. like let me get my screenplay like i felt so good and i was really productive for like a yeah. month after watching this movie that is like a perfect way to put it because like Maybe sometimes I watch it again. you sh- yeah because some, there's some movies where like when you watch them you like remember why you want to do this mm-hmm. um and then you just like it like starts a creative role yeah. and i don't know recently because i saw the first dispatch and last night in soho like within days of each other and i like started writing Right, I don't even. Yeah, but it's just like it's a good life hack. Baby, to be honest, <laughs> it's a good life hack. <laughs> Especially like rewatching it does still ignite it. Maybe not mm-hmm. as much as the first time, but it still works. I think I'm really good at like telling my brain that these are just characters and not mm-hmm. people. <laughs> like oh playing yeah, playing roles. So I think that's why I'm able to like enjoy stuff. But yeah. I know some people can't do that, and I'm so yeah. sorry. I I can't <laughs> do it with music, but I can do it with movies. Me too. I think it's because with music, it, they're not playing a character. It's them. You yes, know it's that it's, person. It's you know their it's their words. Yeah. Quote unquote. Even if they're as gross writers, like they're still like yeah. performing it. Like. But also like Baby Driver. Okay. I have the DVD. Watching the DVD is not going to give them any money. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I feel fine about it. That's why I like DVDs. Cause I love DVDs. That's, that's how I think about it too. I thought yeah. nobody, I was like, am I crazy for thinking? I don't know this? if that's like a, val- well, it is whatever, but it's like a weird, it's like I a loop know. in my head. It's like a, a loophole. loophole. Yeah. 
<laughs> like they're not gonna get a um, single syndication sign. This movie is just so impressive, and it just yeah. like like it was like Edgar Wright's first like big movie. I yeah. feel like in a real life that was like pushed at least. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, this movie really solidified him to like a lot of people. Yeah. That he is like an actually good director. Yeah. Even though like I've been new. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like I like after you got me to watch it, I was like, everyone please go watch. I had my family because my family. I know you like here. I know it's a good I always yeah. feel really good when like I like maybe recommend you something uh-huh. and then you post it on your story because I'm like, yeah. that's how I know it's really good. Like, yeah. Really um I told my family to watch it. I was like, you need I was like, I don't know. I was like, Maybe not so much as more, but when you were in college, you were really, really on your Instagram story, like promoting things if you really Oh I was. It. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. I literally forgot about that era. <laughs> I really wanted to prove I was a film student. <laughs> we, all did. Oh. we all did. We all did. Everyone's God. been I was there. so no- whatever. I'm still annoying. Anyways, I t- so I, like, I told my mom I was like, you need to get the whole family down and like watch this. <laughs> I had it on like movies anywhere or whatever, and they watched it. None of them wanted to watch it, and they all loved it. I was like, it's a, such a good movie. It's so good. It's easy to follow. Yeah. You understand what's going on all the time. It's like visually appealing, s- sonically appealing. It's just like a good time all fucking around yeah honestly and i don't like i think this is really impressive from like a directorial standpoint because like it kind of like made me realize and kind of put in perspective because you know how like you watch directors talk about how they make movies and you're like waiting for somebody to like kind of like ping your ear and be like oh no that makes sense to me yeah and edgar writes one of those people for me because i'm an extremely visual person and also like soundtracks are like if a movie has a good soundtrack like it's like one of the first things I remember. That's yes, why yeah. Waves is one of my favorite movies because mm-hmm. that has a great soundtrack. Um, and it's not like soundtrack as in like score, like soundtrack as in like songs they like pay people to like have in their movie. Oh, okay. You know, like I I appreciate a score, but I feel like soundtracks do it more for me personally. Okay. So that's another reason I really like this movie. Um, and... I really appreciate he like storyboarded every single moment of this and also because a lot of the scenes are mimic to the songs. Yeah. There is it just is so satisfying. To They're me. written into it the is, script. Oh, yes. The yeah. songs. And I remember because like Red, for, reading that script yeah. was like it's game so, it's, changer. The screenwriters go read that script yeah. because there's some times where I'm like, I need this specific song to be in this. Mm-hmm. So I know they tell you not to in like school but i'm like mm. i don't care yeah i'm gonna do it so i will write it into the script but i didn't know how to do it so i looked at baby driver because i was like i know he's gonna have an example of how to write it and that's what i go off of mm-hmm. Same. so fun but yeah it's just like such a visually appealing movie and like having like the noise from the song go with a, no- a folly from like him like shifting a gear or something it's just like scratches a part of my brain that i don't think has ever been scratched <laughs> before and it <laughs> I just love this movie so much. Yeah. So like, good. Like, I don't think baby him. Like, it is interesting, like, the hearing thing and also, like, <laughs> the, like, him living with, um, the guy. The guy. Yeah. You know, I, I think know. that's really interesting. Yeah. And, like, I, especially the sound mixing and everything because of that is, like, so interesting. Maybe the character, him, the main character himself, yeah. isn't necessarily interesting, but I mean, he's kind of like an everyman and also, like, I think just though it's happening around him is like the most interesting part. Yeah, I think he's just supposed to be like charming. Yeah. And like he's baby. <laughs> he's literally baby. <laughs> like I think that's what it is. Yeah. And it's like it's yeah, whatever. Um I have some little trivia that I found and I was like, "Oh, interesting." Okay, so the Mike Myers mask um actually was supposed to be the mask of Michael Myers from the Halloween series, but the producers were unable to obtain legal permission. So then Edgar Wright reached out to the comedian Mike Myers about using masks of his likeness instead, and then it became like a joke. And it's like one of my favorite parts in the movie. It's such a good movie. Yeah. You know, I didn't understand this because I remember this when it first came out. Oh, the that. joke, the scene. But like, because Halloween movies were coming back, so that's probably uh-huh. why they didn't let him do that. Oh yeah, probably. But so it, it like, works so much better. Oh, it's, it's hilarious. So much more funny. Like happy accidents like that just make. Also, the in the original out. Halloween movie, they weren't allowed to be using that mask, so they oh, like wow. re- def- like deformed it to the mask that it ended up being, and that became an iconic mask. It was like a William Shatner like Star Trek mask. Oh yeah, and they yeah. had to deform it so that they couldn't even recognize what it was. Um, and then another one I saw that I was like, oh, it was um, so director Edgar Wright once parked his car in a parking garage, only to realize that by complete coincidence, the car next to him had a stylized "baby on board" sign um, with baby's face on it, um, taken from the movie poster. And Wright left a note on the car's windshield that read, "From the director of Baby Driver, I approve." And you have no idea it. how hard I searched on Etsy for one of those. 
Really? You have no idea. I wonder where like they when got this it. Came out. Did you Etsy find it? Pro- I think they probably made it themselves. Oh, probably. I think there was one on Etsy. I think I don't know. That does sound like a thing you your car would have, like in in that era. Yeah, now I can't. No, oh. but yeah, know. no, the joke wouldn't really. No, <laughs> it's okay. Um, all right, so that was Baby Driver. So the next one we have, it's like a documentary. I don't have that much to say about it, but I just want to cover it because it's like one of his recent things. Um, it's called The Sparks Brothers. It was released uh, this year, but it premiered earlier this year on South by Southwest. Um, and directed by Edgar Wright, starring The Sparks Brothers. Um, and basically, it's a musical odyssey through five weird and wonderful decades with Ron and Russell Mal. I don't know how you say that. Celebrating the inspiring legacy of Sparks. Um, so I, okay, when I went to, I there was like South by Southwest was like online last year. Or this year, I guess, earlier this year. And so, like, this was one of the movies that everyone was like, this is the one you have to watch. If you don't watch it, because you have to, like, sign up for mm-hmm. screenings. So, I, like, signed up for this one because I was like, it's Edgar Wright. Like, I want to see what it's like. It doesn't, whatever. Um, And I started watching it, and I was like, I see the Edgar Wrightness mm-hmm. popping off, <laughs> and but I just don't really care about the subject matter. Okay. I'm sure, like, film, ma- like, I mean, music. like, music majors are like, this is, like, for them. Mm-hmm. And this definitely feels like, I it's wrote, like, incredibly on brand for him. Yeah, it's like a passion project. So you can clearly tell that it's like he wanted to do this and they let him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because even in the trailer, it, yeah. it, it was like at the end, they were like, I know it was a joke, but he was yeah. like, oh, why haven't you let anybody make a documentary yeah. about you before? And they're like, oh, we just didn't want to get it, make it dry. And that they yeah. literally threw water on them. And that's yeah. really cute. <laughs> it's like, but it's so it's like stylized as it would be. So it's like a really fun way of it's a new style of documentary that I hadn't seen before. Where it ca- like it was very original. It was not like, you know, I don't know. You know how all the Netflix true crime yeah. ones are. It's like a shot of a street from a drone. Yeah, it's like they could. They're all basically. They're the all the same, same thing. Um, and violence. It's really sad because it's about real things. That yeah. Um, like I don't know. Formula for that isn't that kind of fucked up. Oh, hundred percent. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> that's. I don't have much to say about it. Like, if you if it sounds interesting to you, check it out. You'll enjoy it. If it doesn't, don't. <laughs> that's it. It's they had Jack Antonoff in it. They had Patton Oswalt in it. Too. Yeah, all the like big music producers are like, yeah, why was he in that? Patton Oswalt? Yeah. No idea. He's in everything. Yeah, he's literally in Eternals as well. Last Night in Soho. Um, this was released in 2021. Directed by Edgar Wright. Story by Edgar Wright. But the screenplay was by Christy Wilson Cairns. And I think you can tell that it was written by a woman. I think it should have been written by a woman. Though. Yeah, so. it's so clear. Yeah. Because I was honestly kind of shook. I was like, Edgar Wright wrote this? With peace and love to Edgar Wright, I love you, but like your past characters, like with your track record, I was like, I he wrote a girl boss movie? <laughs> and then I boss. looked it up. This is not a girl boss movie. Yes, it is. No, it's if not. There, if there's this anything is a that's gaslight ever been, movie. Girl boss gatekeep ass. It's literally all three. Yeah. This is a definition. <gasps> Whoa. Well, like girl boss in the ironic sense, you know, like well, in the yeah. way that people use yes, girl boss. Yeah, but. <laughs> It really is all three of those. Yeah. Um, starring Thomas and Mackenzie and Changing Anya my Taylor Letterbox Joy. review right now. Yeah. <laughs> and the plot is an inspiring fashion designer is mysteriously able to enter the 1960s where she encounters a dazzling wannabe singer. But the glamour is not all, all it appears to be and the dreams of the past start to crack and splinter into something darker. This is my favorite um, Edgar Wright movie. I knew it would be. Yeah. That's, wow. It's incredibly up your alley. <laughs> it is. Um, I just saw this recently. I loved it. My mom didn't want to see it, but I was like, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to like it. Like, it's the guy who made Baby Driver. She? Yeah, she loved it. Oh, cool. Um, And so, I don't know. That I Okay, first of all, this is the first Edgar Wright film to have a female protagonist, T. Um, And I just think this is such... Uh, like, I know it's like, uh, like a genre film. A so, lot of people did not like this movie. Why? It's not really. It doesn't uh, feel like an Edgar Wright movie. It feels misogyny based. Oh, why people don't like it? Mm, I see that. I was like reading, um, like letterbox reviews about it, and like I get what people are saying, but didn't make me not like it. Wait, what? Know? Can you give an example of like what someone's just saying? No. <laughs> Let me look it up. That's all, guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, I don't know. I just I really enjoyed it, and like I do think. Okay, here's what I will say. Halfway through the movie, I was like, oh, my God, this is about sexual trauma. And, like, how, like, like that's the thing I was getting. And I do think the ending, the twist, takes that away. Yeah. Um, And, t- and that's the only thing I was upset about. But the way the twist <laughs> is done is so good that I just didn't care. The first one I clicked on was, what if nostalgia drove you insane and tried to kill you? But that's a four-star review, so that's a good one. Oh. 
Um, two stars. Worst case scenario, Coraline. Okay, fair. Three stars. Men are bad, isn't it? <laughs> okay, no, it was giving the what movie Birds of Prey where like every male character was bad, and then like in this one they were like, but the one male character of, was like. Oh, it, sorry. Go ahead. It made me think of Promising Young Woman. Oh, there we go. That's the one. I don't know why I said Birds of Prey. Same thing. Um, not at all. But like how there's like one I don't think it's for character. men. This movie is not for men. I loved it though. Yeah. No, but I oh. mean like the message. Wait, I'm glad and you. And like, because I think for me, why it resonated with me is just like, besides like the horror aspects and stuff, if you take all that away, like having a girl like be nostalgic for some time period that she has no idea anything about yeah. and like romanticizing it and the horror of that is like, I mean there's bad things happen in every decade but like yeah. having a horror making that a horror aspect instead of like a, a societal aspect you know like racism and you know things yeah. like that um like i thought that was really relatable in a way um because like, i feel like a lot of people our age are super nostalgic for like the 70s and the yeah. 60s when like bad it's not like that shit didn't happen then it just happened in like honestly scarier ways the way okay when she she it's, literally it's, it happened like yeah. what Anya taylor joy's character did um it happens a lot even now it just happens in like a different forms of like um an aspiring like actress or singer and mm -hmm. they basically get pimped out that's what it ends up being yeah so i thought that was like an interesting like tale to tell and I'm very glad that a woman wrote it because I don't think it would have hit the same if a guy wrote it because no. I don't think they would have understood that nuance. No, definitely not. Well, the way that I saw it was like Shaun of the Dead is for the straight people. Scott Pilgrim and um, Baby Driver. Well, not, just Scott Pilgrim is for the bi people. And then um, Last Night in Soho is for the girls and the gays. Me? What are you trying to say to me? No, I just, I, that's how I saw it. Like, you know, he's going no, through all the spectrum. He's going through the whole spectrum. Yeah. Um, well, I commend him for that one. Yeah, good, good. He's inclusive. <laughs> he's giving us diversity in a way yeah. that is like above our pay grade. Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. So when <laughs> I was. such a joke. Please when, don't take that <laughs> seriously, people. Don't cancel <laughs> me. When I was looking up about the movie, I found that the actress, um, Diana Rigg, she actually passed away. I didn't know that. And so that. that's why at the beginning it says for Diana. Didn't know what that was about until now. Um, and I think it actually adds so much to the movie, especially the last scene. Mm -hmm. I won't spoil it like for anyone. Who, like, definitely go watch it and keep that in mind. Yeah. Because I wish I had known that. But I'll rewatch it knowing that. Um, I don't know. Just iconic. Um, oh, also the. Okay. So there's a lot of. Uh, moments where Anna Taylor Joy's character and Thompson McKenzie's character will like switch. Mm -hmm. and the apparently mirrors. yeah apparently all of them were practical except the um uh, the dance sequence which makes sense like you they were yeah. like it was like you had it, to do cgr for that yeah. um but all the other ones were just practical that's crazy that is crazy because i was like did they i was like watching like, I was, like was that a cut where they coming down like the stairs yeah it was so cool that's crazy that it's all practical but i remember <laughs> i remember seeing a headline that was like the one scene that made uh, Edgar Wright go literally crazy and it's definitely one of the mirror scenes I didn't read the article oh. but I saw the headline and I was like <laughs> yeah because I couldn't imagine especially knowing now that they're practical I was like oh that's definitely what he's talking about because yeah. mirrors are so fucking tricky oh oh yeah yeah like to and it for that to be practical so was stuff, it like I don't get it I don't either was I'll have I, hope I will buy the DVD so I can watch the behind the, the scenes. commentary yeah <laughs> um yeah I love this movie I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil it mm -hmm. and it's like very fresh yeah. But I think go watch it in theaters. Because I think always this like, is another one. I feel like a lot of times his movies, people like to shit on as soon as they come out <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. But then in like a co like two to three, two to five years after they come out, people are like rejoicing it. And I wonder how that feels for him. I <laughs> I feel like in Britain he's because it's like it's a very British movie. Like majority yeah, yeah. of these movies, besides like the documentary and Scott Pilgrim, they're they're British movies. Yeah. They're British comedies. So obviously well, Baby British, Driver, right? Is that not what I said? No, you said Scott Pilgrim and oof, the documentary. Oh yeah, I meant to say Baby Driver. Anyways, like he said, uh, what movie? There's a mm, oh, this is what it was. He want because they might make a Baby Driver too, and they might. I don't know. <laughs> 
Um, Good luck, Charlie. Well, I looked it up and he said, I looked up the interview date mm-hmm. and it was like December 2020. And he oh. said something about that. And he, and so Ogre got quote unquote canceled in like June of 2020. So shrub. Anyways, hmm. uh, I feel like with West Side, West Side Story. I was about out, to I say think, that. I think Hollywood's going to forgive him a little bit. <sighs> but like. Uh, I just don't think we need a baby driver too. Edgar, I know you yeah, want to make more I things. Go I know. I think other people are like, there needs to be a baby driver too. Oh. And honestly, honestly, like I am not opposed to it. Okay. Am I like fiending for it? No. But if it happens, oh, yeah, I'm going to be watch mad it. about it. Um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, he was like, if there, I were to make a baby driver too, I wanted to make like another British com, like British genre movie. Oh, like okay. before that, and that that's why he did last night in Soho, because it's like a oh. British movie. I think it's like interesting <laughs> and like admirable in a way. Like I couldn't imagine feeling this way about America. I do know like a weird like kind of like half empty, half full type of way of like making movies for oh, where you grew up, you yeah. know, and like for those people. <sighs> like the way the reason why I was like kind of like if you bought it was like the farewell i feel like is a good way to make an make an american movie but still it's kind of bittersweet because i think that is an american tale is everything being super bittersweet and you know but i guess it just has depends on how you look at it but i thought that was really cool like he must really love the uk yeah good for him (laughs) can't relate um anyway so yeah that was like what he's worked on so far obviously he's gonna have so many more great works mm-hmm. you know he's not even close to that so we have some of the ones that like upcoming projects that we saw he's gonna be like a horror guy i think yeah so he's he's adapting stephen king's the running man very excited about that it's because i think they mentioned that like i saw an interview with him i don't know if it was him or stephen king but they're like kind of spicing it up they're not doing an exact adaptation they're like switching it up for modern audiences oh, good for it stephen uh, king. so i'm I like, like oh that's, that's character <laughs> progression for him. Stephen King loves just like letting people do whatever they want to his movies except um The Shining. He was like not this one and they did it anyway. But I feel like he's like really like flexible with like if someone goes to him they're like I want to do this with you. He's like okay. Really? Yeah. I I and mean, he tweets about it. He's like I loved it. He, he's on Twitter all the time. He <laughs> loves How Twitter. How old is he? I don't know. 76. Wait if that's right I'm going to be really scared. Stephen. Anyways so possibly Baby Driver 2. 74. I was so um, close. And then he has, I, I don't know much about this, but I read like an animated movie called Shadows. Yeah. Um, a lot of adaptations. So Simon Stephenson set my heart to five. Adrian McKinty's horror novel, The Chain. Stephen King's Running Man. And like there's more. And there's like another one that I think he's going to write a TV series about not the Night Stalker Richard Ramirez. But oh yeah, I saw that. There yeah. was like it's like a seventies show. Yeah, I I was like he's making a movie about the Night Stalker, and then I clicked on it, and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> thank God. Not Richard Ramirez. Yeah. This was before Richard Ramirez. Um, and then I Edgar, I thought this would be good for the series to end to on, wrap like, it up, yeah, for filmmakers. And I think I'm just gonna this is like the test episode, so we're just gonna do one. Okay. Um, and his advice for filmmakers is like it doesn't matter if you like have a budget or something if you want to get good at film the reason why he like people always ask him for advice he's like just get a camera like in any form you can and just make something with your friends and he's like it doesn't matter if it's shitty like i watch my old stuff and i'm like i'm not necessarily proud of it but (laughs) it helped me understand what i wanted to do today yeah and i was like that. that is the best advice honestly so that was a really good way to end that i think yeah and i feel I feel good about it. Uh, me too. This episode. That was fun. I do love Edgar Wright, so yeah, we no one can take that away from me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one can. And that was season five. We're yeah. Five, season no, that was three. season three. <laughs> Sorry. I, I don't know why. <laughs> um, thank you guys for listening to this whole season. Mm-hmm. It was like really sporadic, mm-hmm. but I think we delivered some good content. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully y'all enjoyed it. Um, Next week, next week, next season, we're spicing things up a little bit. Yeah. So hopefully you guys like what we do. It doesn't matter if you do or not. We're, we're doing, doing it. Yeah. <laughs> but we love you. Like hopefully you like it. But yeah. like we just have to do this for our mental health and sanity. And mm-hmm. um, just in terms of like. It just make everybody's lives a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see you in December. Yeah. Bye. Bye guys. Happy November. I was going to say happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. But, mm. Oh. Oh, wait. Well, 
happy Thanksgiving and appreciating your... In a modern way. Yeah, in a modern way. With the modern twist. (laughs) Oh, my God. Bye.